Hi, and uh, welcome to your next um, Channel Engineer video. And today is a fix day, and I'll be fixing one of these. Okay, a little iPod Nano. Now, uh, this belongs to my girlfriend, and um, the uh, the problem with it is the uh, power button up here. Okay, is sticky. Okay, it doesn't push down, doesn't click or anything. Okay, so you can't actually power up this device. But um, the other buttons seem to be okay. If you can hear this, I don't know if you can hear this particularly clearly. Okay, the volume ones, perfectly fine. Power one, on the other hand, stuck fast, doesn't want to shift. So we're going to crack this open and uh, see what we can do with it. And um, just to prove that there's actually nothing wrong with this, um, we'll plug in the uh, trusty charger, plug it into the wall, and uh, hey presto, there's the uh, Apple logo up there. There we go. We got life. Okay, it does work. But uh, unfortunately, this button doesn't do anything, but the power buttons do. So the uh, power button, so power button doesn't do anything, volume button does, okay. Now then, how do we get into this? Well, typical Apple, they love to package up these things really, really trickily, okay. Bloody hate working on Apple products because they're a right pain in the ass to open up. Um, so where do we begin? There's no actual screw holes or anything, no screws, no tabs, no toggles, nothing to actually, that you can unpick or unfasten. Um, so, yeah, we really are stuck. Have a look down there, nothing down there, nothing around it, no tabs. And uh, the only way into it is through the screen. Big problem there, because Apple did an extremely cheap and nasty uh, job of putting this together. Okay, and uh, it's something that I absolutely detest. And that's using glue. Okay, they've actually glued that screen down. Stupid. Okay, it means that you know chances are that you, if you're not careful, you're gonna wreck that screen getting it off to actually fix anything internally. You have to replace the battery. You have to do the switches. Who knows? Okay, chances are that you can actually damage that screen, but there are tricks to get to um, getting that off. And uh, one of them is to actually heat up the glue using a hot air station. So let's try and crack this open. Make sure that you don't use any sharp objects when you are trying to get this open, because the screen is in there tight. I would imagine, and there will be a ribbon cable, probably a thin film cable attach it to the board, a very delicate connector on the end. No scalpels, no knives, don't use it otherwise you will damage the screen and also don't try and pry the screen off without releasing that glue otherwise you will crack the screen and it won't only be a switch repair or a battery replace, it will be a screen replace as well and if that happens you might as well chuck the bloody thing in the bin because it will end up working out more expensive to replace and to fix than getting a new one. Okay, and in the end, that's what I have to do with my girlfriend. Um, yeah, Kerry, if you're watching this, yes, you didn't like, didn't want me to crack this open, did you? We a bloody new one, even though it is fixable. Still, I can fix it now. And uh, yeah, and she might moan if I destroy it either in the process because she's got a brand new spanking new one. So off we go. All right, here we go. There's a little iPod down here on the desk. Okay, uh, powered off again. So the switch is knackered. Uh, if you can hear that buzzing sound in the background, that's my hot uh, temperature station heating up. And if you can see around the side, can't actually get into this too well. Now, what you want to do in order to get this open, okay, are some. Um, uh, a thin piece of plastic, you can get shims or something like that which you can slide in underneath the case, you can get the, the mobile, if you go to a mobile phone repair shop you can get um, the uh, screen replacement kits, they come with a little spreader bars and things like that that you can slide underneath, it's just a piece of plastic, you can slide underneath and um, 
pride screen up with and pride screen out of cases. You don't actually need those, okay? What I've got here on my desk, which I'll show you, which we're going to use to get the screen up with, after we've heated it up, these little things. Okay, I've got some plastic uh, corners off the off of some plastic packing, okay? Now, so what you get your knives or scissors in, okay, your, the blister pack style stuff, all that, and you slice the corner off, and um, hey, presto, we've got our, a nice thin bit of plastic to get in underneath the screen, okay? easy top with and it's nice and blunt you're not going to cut anything with it okay and it's pretty rigid as well if you can't get hold of any of that you know an old store card or credit card or anything like that that sort of stuff okay if you do that make sure that you do scissor off the edge a little bit make a nice um, angle like what I did with this one okay if you can just see that okay just to uh, just bring it down to a nice uh, thin edge. Anyway, I'm jabbering on, so let's get on and do this bloody thing since so that's what you want to see. So, first of all, heat up uh, the glue around the screen. Took a little bit of time, but we managed to get it underneath. And what you want to do is just slide this around, releasing off the screen as we go. Okay, press up. Out it comes. See that? There we go. There's that glue that you can see. A little glue glass gasket coming around there. Now then, open around that way. Be careful where you take this screen out. If you can see down there, you've got a slight ribbon cable right down in the uh, down here. Okay, if you can see that down here, there it is. You can actually see it on the screen. Be careful with that. You don't want to put too much pressure on that. Take out this bloody glue crap. So you look, look at this. Horrible stuff. Bloody using glue to tack down screens with bloody idiots. Okay. And we can take this out. Pull it up at an angle and there we have it. Our screen is out. This goes down onto a little connector. We can see there. And so we'll pull that out eventually. And uh, yeah, right then. Next stage, get all the bits of glue out from around the edge. Just peel it off with your fingers from the uh, underside of your LCD as well. Okay. Be careful not to actually damage this. No. So you know, pull it away a little bit. There we go. Just neaten it up. Okay, so the screen is off. Double check that your screen is still okay by plugging it in. Yeah, still okay, still perfectly fine, excellent. Right then, next thing is to get this back shield off, I imagine. And to do that, there is one, two screws I can see. Small crosshead, possibly that one. Yep, yeah, that one fits lovely. And it goes. And I'll turn off my reflow station in the hot iron. Right 
Yeah, let's those out. lost a little screw somewhere. It's going to be interesting trying to find that little bugger. Yeah, that's the screws out and time to take out this shield. Okay there we go, one metal shield out. Oh my good god. And Let's cable down to the, uh, we've got the thin film, which I thought it would be, thank god that bloody thing's off. We've got thin film all the way down to the socket here, so this can uh, come out, I imagine it's just a pull fit. Push fit, maybe not, no, it's in there, tight, I don't particularly want to mess about with that too much, right. So where are these switches? Right, switches are on the lock top side. Uh, battery is around here. Luckily, it's like a pull tab there. Don't know quite what for, but it's a pull tab for something or another. So that can come out. Got to get this battery out. So how the hell do we get this battery out? I do not know. Let's uh, what we got. Right, looking. There, so we can get a, let's get a little flattened screwdriver in there. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Looks like this is actually all glued in place as well, so the battery is, which is a bit of a pain in the arse. Yep, I can hear it, it's glued in somewhere. How is something glued in in these bloody devices? Useless. That's the battery released. Now well, let's pull that sucker out. There it is, yeah. Bloody hell, what? Man, this is really, really piss poor engineering, you know. Battery's actually glued down to the bottom of this. That's bloody useless. Alright, what's next? Okay, we've got. This is where our buttons are. Uh, looks like we've got some screws holding in that around the edge, the um, this assembly, so let's take those out. Okay, out that comes. And as usual, to make matters even worse, all the screws are all different sizes. So, make sure that you do keep them to one side and create some little piles make some um, yeah, put them all in order ah, this is stupid glue to hold stuff together non-standard screws didn't standardize on screw sizes you know makes disassembly and assembly really really awkward. Now then that's out, let's see. How can we get this out? Right. Just probably we've got the ribbon cable coming down. We've got ribbon cable coming down here to our main board. That goes off down the side to these switches at the top. This is all blacked out taped in place, we've got another cable running down here, ah there's that missing screw that I said, and where the hell did that go, there it is, one for the actual, um, that metal shield, there it is, there we go, haven't lost it, now you've got a ribbon cable that runs all the way down there, down to that board there, so, oof, Bloody things are a mess. 
Uh, oh my god, if you really want to have to replace the battery on this, it is a 3.7 volt uh, lithium polymer. And if you have to replace the battery, you have to bloody well sold, desolder it and solder a new one on. Okay, it's not a plug fit or anything like that. God almighty, this is one of the reasons why I fucking hate Apple. Now, their devices look really nice in the room, but when you get down to it, they're really piss poor engineered. Okay, can't replace the battery unless you've got a soldering iron. The connections to the screen are micro small, you know, they're not particularly robust. Everything's held down with sodding glue. You screws and everything, they're all bloody different sizes. You know, it really is a nightmare when you have to try and replace any of this. All right, let's see if we can get any of this out now. Aha. Right then, if we attack it from this corner here, what we can actually do is to release off this black crap, this tape. Yes. Look at that. Bloody taping down shit. And uh, there we go, we've got a uh, you can see down here our screw assembly. Okay, so there we have it. Everything's taped down in place. Bloody horrible. Be careful as you take that tape off. Now then, we've got this is our switch assembly right here. It's all on ribbon cable and horrible little connectors. That's our volume control there. Looks like uh, metal contacts at the back there, which is actually pushing down onto these. Okay, so we've got volume control. Right. Ah, bloody hell, man. How the hell am I meant to show this on bloody camera? This thing is as fiddly as anything. Right. What have we got? Volume control. Buttons are there. Sorry about my fat fingers. That can come out. The power button here, which is jammed, is well and truly jammed. This isn't coming free at all no movement in that whatsoever and if we observe these two all right these are uh, switches here for the uh, volume control pop pop this is a power button switch just here now you notice that this one doesn't have a black dot in the middle on the power switch that's the power switch one just there. I don't know if you can see that, you can't see it yet. There's no actual black shimmer or anything sitting on that, uh, unlike the volume ones. So I imagine that what's happened is this power switch has become misaligned. It's knocked off the, the little plastic bobbly bit, which looks like it's right there actually. <laughs> yeah, if you can see that small little dot just there, that's the actual fact. The, the little um, black plastic shim that's meant to be sitting in the middle of that switch actually come loose a bit crap design so uh, yeah let's see what happens when we try and push that down now any life out of this? no nothing yet probably because it has to yeah it's got to make contact with the outer two uh, it looks like it, these metal plates sit across to oh, bits there. Right, mm. and let's. I can't actually get that something switch out. This is not looking good. 
absolutely no movement in that, there's nothing holding it in place. There we go, we've got some movement now. There we go. Wiggling it backwards and forwards, it's actually freed that switch now. You can hear that now. There we go. Trouble is, we're trying to um, reconnect this, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Right, first things first, what we've got to do is to re glue this little um, plastic shimmer there onto the switch. And also realign it and everything. So let's see what we can do. Yep, there we go. Right, if we if I put some bench here, okay, this is my power button here. If we actually push down on this button. Are we going to get anything out of this? Yep, there we go. Look at that. Off and on off, on and off. Lovely. Now the button's working perfectly fine. It's just that without this little plastic divot, it's probably become misaligned, it's jammed up the switch and um, stopped it from working properly. So let's just glue a new little shim onto this switch, into this switchy bit here. Hopefully that will solve our problems. Now it's a very very small, it's very very thin. What I'm thinking about doing is not actually sticking that on, I am going to use a piece of tape. So, here's my tape, this is um, double sided tape. Okay, there it is. I'm just going to take a section of this off, just slip it, snip a little bit off and um, stick it on there. Uh, I've got some scissors here, I've got some scissors here, I've got some odd scissors here. Right, this is going to be interesting. <sighs> the interesting part is going to be putting the bloody thing back together again. These aren't the best of scissors by the looks of things, but they'll do, so I've got me a bit of tape off. Just uh, trim this back a little bit. Because we only want a very small bit. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult doing it sometimes to camera actually. There we go. That's a small bit of double sided tape. You okay, only really want about maybe a quarter of this. It's gonna be a little, it might be a bit difficult trying to snip off and stick on. That's all that I need, just that little, little bit on the tip of my finger. Even less than that, right. That's not going to be much good then. Yeah, that's definitely well out of the question, can't do it that way. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to glue that little... Uh, Bibbly bobbly bit on. So, time to grab me super glue. Okay, super glue. And some tweezers. All right, there we go. So we're going to tweezers time. We want to take this little blip here, mount it into the centre of the switch, and hopefully everything will go okay. So a bit of super glue out of this tube. We're just going to place it on the very, very 
Can't be a thing I might run out. Oh man. This is not fair. Run out of that glue. Whoopie no. Let's see, what can I use instead? A little bit of tape. Anything, I don't care. Tape, 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 tape. Alright, let's try the, the old double sided sticky tape again. Now I've got some better scissors this time. Snip off just a little corner. Excellent. Okay, there we have it on the end of my drive out, just a little, little bit. Maybe a little bit less than that. Oh my god. This is getting titchy and titchy and tittier. But it only has to be very titchy. And this is the one problem with miniaturization in the world today. Yep. This looks all very nice, but when it comes to actually using the bloody stuff, it can be a right pain in the arse. into the centre of that switch. Come on, stick, 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 stick. Lost it. Probably going to have to glue that on actually, yeah. I'm going to need that glue, alright. By the time I've got it down fine enough, there's bugger all sticky left on that. No, it's going to have to be the glue job. Alright, couldn't find any glue, but I did manage to find some copper tape. Some adhesive copper tape, so... There we go, putting this on. There we go, right then. So, find something sticky, something reasonably fit, something like a bit of tape. Uh, in this case, I got some copper shielding tape. Also got some aluminium shielding tape, both sticky, who cares? Okay, just a little bit of a shim just to go over that switch, just to replace this little uh, bobbly bit that's come off down here. Okay, I can get rid of that off there. Clear out some of the crap. Right, done. Excellent. Next up, reassembling it. Okay. This can all go back in there. Slide it all back in, slide it all back in, dilly dilly dum. I see which way around does this go? It goes in there, that goes into there, right then. So, first up, tease it in, back in, line it up with your holes. Can be a little bit fiddly. Okay, so let's set our bar. This has to go right into the corner. Like this. There we go. And we're in. Almost, almost, almost. There we go, we're in. First screw in. This is where you do need some tweezers. Okay, first screw in. You can see that we've got a hole just here. I'll try and zoom into this a little bit more. And uh, it doesn't like going in that far. Mm. 
still. Right, so we've got this uh, little bracket back in. Hopefully, what I'm saying does make sense. If not, then uh, uh, there's tons of other tons of these out there, I guess. So, can reverse it back in. First screw in. Said. These aren't the most friendliest of devices <laughs> or screws. All right, the first one back in. Just put it in loose. Next screw. Once you get the first one in, the other hole should be more or less aligned. So you can get the next screw in. You can use your fingers for that. That one's in place. Don't do them up tight. Almost forgot this a volume button which did fall out. So make sure that, that goes in. Uh, which way around does it go? Ooh, crap! I've forgotten now. <laughs> uh, I imagine the the right. Yeah. Okay. Minus side to the uh, negative side to the far corner. Why? Well, I'm going to hazard a guess. This side is particularly round where the uh, negative is if you can see that okay it's almost flush to the actual button opposite side has got a little bit of a tag on it and this button the negative side is right in the corner so there's not really much room for it so I imagine that it goes in that way around again another fiddly little bloody git to get in so ah oh dear I do hate these little ones. They can be the most tedious of things coming. There we go, and uh, we're in place, nice and flush to the board. Switches are through, just like the other switch on the other side. Make sure that goes right into the corner. Keep it level. And uh, push that in. Got a little rubber seal around the edge. These ones can be a bit of a pain. Just slowly tease it in. Some people do actually moan about these and pull them off. But uh, I'll try and keep these on. Uh, there we go. It's in place. Now holes line up. Holes line up to the uh, to the threaded holes. There you go. There's one oh crap. I just lost one screw there, but I can see it. So I will screw that in. This one in first. Excellent. That's in nice. This one that dropped in here you can go into the other hole now. All screwed in. Oh, bloody hell, man. Ah, I hate these things. Why do I have to make these little devices so small? Consumers, please. Little things are bloody so difficult to repair. There we go. All in. Tighten them all up. Okay, and uh, let's see what it does. Right then. Moment of truth. Does this switch actually do work? Power. Back up. That's not really doing much, is it? Pushing it out now, but a bit of pressure behind it doesn't seem to be doing very much at all. Hmm. Let's plug in this charger just to make sure that I haven't buggered it up completely. Nope, that's in there. Okay. 
the volume control, but yep, that's working okay about this. Power button. No. Still no luck with this power button. Right then. What is that? Oh, look at that. Did something then. Do you need reseating or anything? No. Definitely doesn't like something there. Oh, back out it comes. Hmm. Again, did this actually work? Off, on, yeah, this is working. Okay, may have to actually thicken that up a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, let's try another little shim. On top, I've got a bit more of this uh, copper tape. I'm going to lay a little bit more of this over the top, right in the centre. And I have a feeling that the tape that I put on wasn't quite thick enough because this copper tape does come down quite thick and it is it does press really, really thinly. So let's put a little bit more out just to pack it out a little bit more. Actually, go on like that. Okay, let's refit it again. So we're in first screw in. Getting these screws in can be a little bit tedious. Yeah, we'll just do it with one at the moment. Let's see how this goes now. There we go. Look at that. Screen on. Screen off. Sorted. Lovely. Yep, just needed that little bit of shimmer. And there that's a little bit thicker. So depending on if you switch how far your switch is worn or how um, anything else, you know. Or if you can't find that bobbly bit and you have to do a make mend, then here we go. Second time lucky, right. Reassembly time, battery in. Get it underneath this little lip here first. back on. Alright, back again, just getting interrupted. Right, like I said, just flip the battery back in, get the screen back in. Okay, this has to go back in in the same sort of fashion. So hook the uh, circuit board under first, the edge, and clip this down. A bit of push to it. Okay, that should go back in. Okay, uh, you might want to run a bit of glue around it. It's up to you. Um, it depends how much of your sticky you got left. This one doesn't seem too bad. Um, yeah, and there we have it. On, and will it come on now? Play, yeah, it does. Hey, look at that. On, off. Beautiful. Switch it on, 
volume controls up, volume controls down. If you're interested, you want to get into the uh, the status menu, etc. Your service menu. Keep um, switch it on. Keep your finger on the power button and on the volume controls. And keep it there until it goes off. Da -da 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 off. Keep your finger pressed, and there we go. Straight to the uh, the uh, setup menu. Okay, and that's how you're getting into the setup menu. So from that, you can do all kinds of things. You can do the uh, the the touch panel testing and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, there you go. Job done. One thing I forgot to do. Yeah, there's always a one bit that left that shield. Luckily, we didn't glue this back, so we'll just plug that shield in now. I'm always forgetting something, aren't I? Right then. Uh, which way around does that go? It goes in that way up, okay. I believe, no it doesn't, it goes in that way, it goes in that way. Let's see, which way around does this go? That way. Uh, the top of our cable. Like that, and we'll screw that in. Now, where are those screws gone? There's the little culprits. One to go in there. Some corner. This is where having a magnetized um, screwdriver bit comes in handy. Okay, there we go, and it goes. Screw that down. All right, all screwed in place. We'll tag that one down again, since it didn't go in properly. more get in the hole this time I didn't miss the hole doesn't want to go in there why not why don't you want to go into that little hole I have a feeling yep this screw is bigger than the other screw And there we go, that one went into that hole. As I was saying, Apple isn't one for standardising their screws. Bit of a pain in the arse. Yeah, that one's gone in there tight on that side. So, different size screws, different size screw, different size screw. Glue. Come on. Yeah, you know, battery, soldered in place. You can't replace it that easily. Dumb asses. So everything's in place. Make sure that you get this uh, that ribbon cable underneath the connector first, and we're all in place. Power it down. Power it up. And there we have it. Brilliant. We're back in business. And like I said, a little tab bit for the battery. Don't need it. Sticky tape. Come on. Who sticks down bloody stuff with sticky tape? Ah, so this is that's just an example of bad engineering, you know. Sticky tape and glue. Ah, sacrificing, you know, <laughs> reliability and everything for aesthetics. You know, really, you need both, and for the price, you know, doing stuff like that's ridiculous. Anyways, there we go. All done.